Hello my dear students, myself Dr. Naimullah Sharif from Department of Biology. I am going to handle few of your biology classes. To start with, today we are going to learn a topic called Morphology of Flowering Plants. As we know, there are a number of plants surrounding us in which some of them are flowering, some of them are non-flowering. All flowering plants coming under one single category called angiosperms. The angiosperms bear the flower which is meant for sexual mode of reproduction which gives fruits which enclosing the seeds. Now we are going to learn a topic called morphology. Morphology is nothing but the studying of the phenotypic characters of an organism or external morphology or the features of an organism is called morphology. So as we are learning the flowering plants, in this chapter we are learning about the phenotypic or external characters of all the angiospermic or flowering plants. As we know, plant bears two different parts, phenotypically it shows two different regions. One is root system and another called as an shoot system. The part of the plant body which will found underground that is within the soil is called as an root system. It is underground part of the plant body or which will found inside the soil. Similarly, the part of the plant which will found above the ground that is called as an shoot system or it is called the aerial parts of the plant body which will found above the ground that is what we called shoot system. So these are the two basic parts of the plant, angiospermic plant which has been classified. The root system which is underground part of the plant, shoot system which is the aerial part of the plant body which will found above the ground. As we are learning about the morphology, the external features of the plant body, we will take one by one the parts of plant and we will try to learn about the concept which is related to that. To start with, the first one is the root system. The root system is underground part of the plant body which is found under the soil which will found under the soil, underground part of the plant body which develops from the radical part of embryo. As we know, in each seed, there is a presence of radical and a plumule. Let me show you. If you take in one dicot seed, in the dicot seed, we come across with radical and plumule. The radical which will found as a small outgrowth here and the plumule are the small leafy structure found between the two cotyledon. So it is the radical part. This is what we call radical. Or if you see the side view of the seed, might have been observed most of you. There is one small outgrowth still found at one corner of the seed. This is called radical. So this radical part of the embryo will develop into root. Such type of roots are called as a true root which develop from radical proper. I will repeat. The root which develop from the radical which is a part of embryo, such type of roots are called true roots. If the roots develop other than the radical, like sometimes in some plants, like in banyan tree, the roots are coming from the branches. In sugarcane, the roots are coming from the nodal region of the stem. Like that, in number of plants, roots will develop other than the radical. 
such type of roots which is not developing from radical they are called adventitious roots adventitious roots are the one which develops from the other parts of the plant other than the radical so the root system which is found as an underground part basically it will be classified into two types one is tap root system in which the radical will develop into primary root this primary root bears the number of secondary roots the lateral roots which are coming out from the primary root called secondary from the secondary root again the tertiary root this kind of root system where the primary root bears number of lateral roots which form secondary tertiary etc so such type of root system is called tap root system which is found in all the dicot plants this is one of the feature of dicot plants as we know angiosperms will be classified under two categories monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous plant monocots and dicots in all the dicots we come across with the condition of root called as an tap root system similarly there is one more type of root system called fibrous root the another type of root system called fibrous root system in fibrous root system the primary root which develops from the radical is short lived and in the place of that primary root there are number of roots are developing from the end of the stem such results in the formation of fibrous root here the primary root is short lived and it is not developed much and in the place of that there are number of roots develop from the end of the stem bearing a root system called fibrous root system it is called fibrous root system and this is one of the feature found in case of monocot plants in all the monocots we come across with an fibrous root system where the primary root is short lived in the place of primary root it is again to occupied by the number of fibrous roots now what is the function of root now the main function of this root system is anchorage which is nothing but the fixation where the plant will be fixed to the ground that is, is called fixation second main function of root is absorption it absorbs water minerals nutrients from the soil which is needed by the plant body which is going to received or absorbed through the root hairs found in the, whether it may be tap root system or whether it may be fibrous root system in such case the minerals nutrients will be going to absorb from the soil and it will be supplied to the aerial parts of the plant body for the overall growth of the plant so that is what we called the root and the root system the root which is developing from radical which gives two functions that is anchorage and fixation anchorage or fixation and also it is involving in an absorption of minerals water nutrients from the soil now we'll see about the modifications of root that means other than the anchorage and absorption the roots will perform some other functions in some of the angiosperm 
other than the absorption and fixation the roots will perform some like storage mechanical support etc so that will learn in the form of an modifications of roof so we are discussing about modifications of roots as we know the functions of root root involves in an absorption and fixation but in some of the angiospermic plants apart from this absorption and fixation root involves in some other functions like storage called as in storage roots like in case of radish the root primary root will bulged to store the reserved material similarly in case of carrot the conical the primary root will bulge to store the reserved material similarly in case of turnip or beetroot the primary root will bulge to store the reserved material such type of roots are called storage roots which is meant for storing the reserved material similarly apart from that in some of the plants like in case of sugarcane or grasses the root called stilt root where it gives mechanical support it gives mechanical support the first one we have seen is storage now the second one is the mechanical support giving roots like in case of sugarcane at the nodal region we come across with some roots arising apart from its fibrous roots some roots are developing from the nodal region so such type of roots which develop from the nodes in sugarcane or in grasses which is for mechanical support similarly in case of banyan tree the root called prop root might have been seen in banyan tree there are number of hanging roots coming out from the branches so these roots which develop from the branches they are called prop roots prop roots which are also helping out in a mechanical support whether it may be stilt root or it may be the prop root the roots is for the mechanical support remembered in the very beginning are told if the root is developing from other parts of the plant other than the radical such type of roots are called adventitious root this is one of the example of adventitious root where the root is developing from the branches or from the nodal region that is from the aerial parts of the plant body similarly there is one more type of root called as an breathing roots it is called breathing roots which helps out in an exchange of gases between the plant and its surrounding environment so such type of breathing roots are called nematophores they are called nematophore one marks question name the breathing roots it is called nematophores here the roots are developing if you take the plants like avicennia rhizophora etc there are number of plants which is growing near the seashore region in that the roots showing some of the roots are growing above the ground like this the roots grow above the ground and each root if you observe it shows some minute pores and such pores are helping out in an exchange of gases from the surrounding environment and such roots are called nematophores are also called as an 
breathing roots which help out in an exchange of gases from the surrounding environment Next now we'll see regions of root basically the root show three different regions the regions of root if you observe in the form of a diagram the primary root is protected the tip of the primary root is well protected by the root cap the region the first region which will found near the root root cap it is made up of the tissue which is highly dividing very compact cells dynamic cells dividing cells are found so this tissue which occupies the tip is called zone of meristem meristem is nothing but the meristematic tissue present in the tip of the root which is growing point of the root which grows continuously which go on penetrating inside the soil and fixing the root to the ground then above that meristematic zone there is a zone called zone of elongation where the cells are attaining maturity i am showing elongation of the root that ultimately increases the length of the root is called zone of elongation where cells will elongate and that ultimately increases the length of the root follow to that there is a zone called zone of maturation where cells will reach to definite shape definite function definite structure so here the cells will show maturation and usually at this region will found some minute lateral roots called secondary roots or root hairs will start developing from this region so they are called root hair and this area or this zone is called zone of maturation so these are the three zones the first one zone of meristem then second one zone of elongation and the lastly it is zone of maturation where the cells will attain maturity and involves in bearing the secondary and tertiary roots in the form of an lateral roots so these are the different zones of roots which will going to found in an underground part now we'll pass on to the stem so this is about the root and its modification and the different regions of the root in the next class we will discuss about the other parts of plant like stem leaf and different types of leaf so i'll stop it here thank you have a nice day.